Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. I am super excited to bring you a species profile on a really cool fish and not one that's really common. It's in this 55 gallon tank. It is the blue tetra, not to be confused with the neon tetra, but it's a really great fish. Hope you enjoy the video. Appreciate you being here. Well, I am really excited to bring you this 55 gallon that houses our blue neon tetras. These are great fish. You can see them swimming all around the bottom and they're in here with a number of other fish that we will briefly mention as we go through the video. These fish are from South America, uh, specifically ar around Peru. What's interesting about these tetras is they're some of the larger small tetras, if that makes any sense. They get around two inches or so and as you're watching these fish, they swim a lot different than a lot of the other tetras that I've kept before. They have more of a wiggling swimming manner than and most tetras you know when you consider the neons and the cardinal tetras and and the ember tetras these are very different in terms of their behavior more on that in a few minutes coloration is really cool and you can see here they've got that subtle blue color a little bit of silver near the front part of their body or or maybe a little bit of a clear body and these are really great fish, really pretty. They will get white tips to the ends of their tail fins, which is also pretty cool. Now their behavior is a little bit different from other smaller tetras. If you're used to keeping neons, whether the standards, black neons, gold neons, or even some of the other smaller tetras, these fish are a lot more active. As you can see throughout the video, they swim a lot more than a lot of the other tetras do. They're also slightly more aggressive than a lot of the smaller tetras I've seen in the past or that I've had in the past. So that's something to keep in mind. So I would label these fish as mostly peaceful, but they do have a little bit of an edge to them. And so when it comes to tank mates, that's something you have to consider. I would pretty much, just to be on the safe side, rule out most long fin fish. And so your fancy guppies, definitely the bettas, angel fish, those fish with the longer flowing fins might not be the best fit for your blue tetras. So what will work with them? I think a lot of the other tetras work in this particular tank. We've got Von Rio tetras, we have cherry barbs, pygmy quarry cats. We actually have some Amira rasboras. I don't know necessarily if I would recommend that particular combination. If I could do it again, I probably wouldn't put the mirror rasboras in with this group. But most of your quarry cats are gonna work just fine. I think some of your larger live bears with shorter fins, like your standard mollies, your standard sword tails, your platies, we have some platies in this tank, that has worked out just fine. Again, your other types of tetras might work out okay. So in here, like I said, we've got the Von Rios, but maybe diamond tetras, red eye tetras, a little bit, something that's a little bit more, has a little bit more energy to them, a little bit stronger personality. But I could see them also working with the golds, the neons, the ember tetras as well. I think this would be a good fish to combine with some of the garamis, certainly honey garamis, dwarf garamis. And even in this particular case, I think they could work out pretty decently with your standard golds, your blues, your opalines, your larger garamis that tend to be a little bit more on the aggressive side. I think your medium sized rasboras probably work as well. So the pork chop rasboras, maybe the lamp eyes, brilliant green rasboras may also be options. You could probably combine these with some of the, the smaller barbs. Like I said, we've got cherry barbs in here, but I could see them working with tiger barbs and, and the smaller ones, nothing like a uh, tinfoil barb that's gonna eat them as they get older or as they get larger. Your cleanup crew, I already mentioned the quarry cats. I could see them working with mystery snails and bristlenose plecos and clown plecos. I don't think I would put shrimp in with these particular fish. Again, they're just a little bit more active and slight, I, I wouldn't call them aggressive, but for a tetra, they are certainly more curious and a lot more confident than a lot of the other tetras that I've kept before. If you need something for the top of the tank, I think something like hatchet fish might work out pretty well. Glass cats. This is a fish I would have no problem keeping with rainbow fish because they're also pretty active. Otocinclus might work. If you want to keep them with cichlids, I would stay on the smaller side because any fish that's large enough to fit another fish in, the, in its mouth, that smaller fish is probably going to become lunch. So Cribenzas, rams, although I would go with the standard variety rams, none of these would I do long fins. Uh, some of the epistos might work, keyhole cichlids, curviceps. So some of those smaller cichlids might be good options. Now, when it comes to water parameters, 
These fish are gonna do great at right around your standard tropical fish temperature, somewhere around 78 to 80 degrees. This particular tank is approaching 80 degrees pH. You're probably best off around between six and seven and a half. Now our pH is a little bit higher. It gets closer to around a pH of eight. Water hardness, they're gonna be fairly tolerant of a number of different water hardness parameters. We're somewhere in that three to 10 degrees water hardness. We're, we're at closer to 10 degrees. They're gonna do fine between three and 10. We don't have ammonia or nitrite in our tanks. And for any fish, not just these, but any fish, you don't wanna be having ammonia or nitrite in the tank. And we try to keep our nitrates at 20 parts per million or less. Feeding these fish has been very, very easy to do. And so generally speaking, we feed North Fin flakes and North Fin micro pellets. That's our prepared foods. The community flakes work just fine. Frozen foods can also work well. So frozen brine shrimp, uh, frozen blood worms, which you'd probably want to cut them up into a little bit smaller pieces. They will eat live baby brine shrimp. Most small fish do, and these are no exception. By the way, if you are looking for a place to purchase these fish, we got these and all the fish that you see in this 55 gallon from Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. I will put their website in the description below. All the fish came in healthy. They've been doing great now for a, a fairly long period of time. So uh, very happy with what we received there. So check them out in the description below, Flip Aquatics. Tank size. Now here's where you start to see a lot of variation on the internet. My personal opinion, given the activity level and the fact that they are so, they're energetic and they're confident, but not necessarily aggressive. I personally, if I were keeping these fish, would not keep them in anything less than a three foot tank. So that's usually something like your 40 breeder. This is a 55 gallon. I would have no problem keeping them in a 33 long or a 40 long. When you get less than three feet, now you're looking a lot of times at things like a 20 long, Again, with the activity level, I'm not so sure that's the best option. It can be done. But the other thing about these fish is you really gonna wanna keep them in a decent size group. I know for most Tetras, people often recommend six or more. I would say this is a Tetra that you really wanna have 10 to 12. And so that 20 long, while it's possible to do that, I think their size combined with their activity level, you're probably better off in a larger tank than just your standard 30 inch 20 long. Okay, so decor, you can see what we're doing here. We've got plants, live plants in this particular tank. We have driftwood and rocks and sand. Now the decor, it's not like these fish really interact with the decor. They're open water swimmers, so your substrate, it can be gravel, it can be sand. That really doesn't matter. I would recommend do a darker substrate like we've done here with a darker background, and you're gonna see a lot more color. If you've got a tan sand or tan gravel, or you've got a white sand, they're probably gonna lighten up a little bit and maybe not show as much color as you're seeing here. Live plants are not required. It's just a preference that we have. If you wanted to use plastic plants or fake plants, that's perfectly fine. They're really not gonna need any hiding spots because again, they're open water swimmers, so it's not really all that necessary. If you were interested in breeding the blue tetra, they're like most tetras. They're egg scatterers. The easiest way to breed tetras is to put a group in a smaller tank, like maybe a standard 20, put in a spawning mop, feed them well, as long as you've got males and females and they are adults, they will usually scatter eggs in the with, throughout the tank. They'll get caught up in the spawning mop, remove the mop to a, a 10 gallon tank, let the fry hatch after a couple days. They're gonna eat infusoria or micro worms or some type of pulverized flake food until they're large enough after about a week or so to eat live baby brine shrimp. Maybe it takes a little bit longer, but that's probably the way I'd go. But if, if you leave the Tetras in a community setting, even with just the, the group itself, they're gonna eat the fry. So these are fantastic fish. They've provided a lot of color, a lot of action to our tank, as you can clearly see. I highly recommend them. If you get a chance to keep them, It's they're absolutely a lot of fun. If you want a lot more options for tank mates, check out the description below. Appreciate you being here, and we'll see you in the next one.